personal lives. And it's sometimes okay to share those with students. At least I think so. <clears throat> so, who is it that's coming down the pike? Well, <clears throat> excuse me. Social emotional learning, folks. There are students whose skills, literacies, competencies are coming a little differently along with character qualities to your classroom this year. Having, having been exposed and taught directly how to deal with social emotional situations in the classroom through a variety of different frameworks, uh, all of the umbrella of SEL, as we say, in public education. I write about that in the book you're given on page 43, so you can check that out. What are today's college students like? Well, that's an important point. They were directly in the middle of Gen Z. So what is Gen Z? Well, we're going to get there. They fall right in Generation Z. And I tell my students, since my last name is Zara, they named your generation after me. So <laughs> after been in education 39 years, I guess I deserve the privilege for at least naming something after me. At least all the other names they gave me don't apply anymore. Okay. But they joined college from public, private, homeschool, education, and all other forms as well. So here they are, from a vast array of educational backgrounds, and they're coming to you. Monday, right? Monday. Gen Z is showing up. Monday. Are you ready? You excited? Scared? I hope you're not scared. No, it's cool. They're coming to you. They're actually coming to you. You're here, here, they're coming to you. What a pleasure that is to have humans come visit you and forced to do so. Yeah, that's a wonderful thing. Their parents, in this case, are probably one or more of the following types, either passive or absent or non-existent, helicopter or bulldozer parents. So if you have uh, traditional students coming out of high school coming to you, you have a parent group in the background speaking volumes to them and even maybe going to drop you an email or two because uh, the present generation of parents of Generation Z students has absolutely no qualms about taking the next level for their kid. And you may be that level that they need to communicate with. <laughs> Anybody have a parent email before? Raise your hand. Ever have a phone call before? Raise your hand. Thank you. Yeah. What is it about parents today that are making every effort to secure what they want for their own child. This is college. This is not junior high. But there's a reason for that. And you know about the technology reliance in this generation. And this generation is more inclined to feel like they're owed things and deserve things rather than have the opportunity to achieve them for themselves. This is why they ask you why they can't get an A. <laughs> I did the work. I should have an A. Well, shouldn't they? Or is there an opportunity to have an A? Or are they entitled to an A for showing up? This generation thinks by showing up, maybe you know, all of us should get the same AYSO trophy. <laughs> <laughs> maybe the same certificate of participation. Maybe the same diploma, because I graduated. Maybe you've been doing some reading about education here in California particularly, but across the United States. And uh, Cindy, if you don't mind with it, ready, click this. This is an interview. You'll like this. Good morning. Who are you? I'm in your 9 a.m. class. Professor, my name is Presley. Really? You don't look familiar. Oh wait, I think I did see you at the Harry Potter bookstore event a week ago. Weren't you dressed up as a wizard? I haven't been to class in a month. I've been sick. My grandmother died. My dog ate a chicken bone. My aunt needed a transfusion. My dad was in a car accident. My best friend ate a bad clam. My grandmother, I mean, my grandfather died. I had the clap. My roommate never woke me up. I have a medical excuse to sleep until 3 p.m. every day. <laughs> Attendance is not a required part of the grade, is it? My, my, my. You had one hell of a month. Nevertheless, 
attendance and participation are 20% of your final grade. That is in the syllabus that I provided at the start of the semester. Okay then. What questions do you have for me? I want to change my paper topic. Do you really think that is a wise choice? Today is Monday. The final paper is due on Friday. That gives you less than five days to think about, develop, research, and write a passable argumentative essay that you have had a month to work on. Changing your topic now seems illogical. I don't have enough to say about my current topic. What about the strategies we discussed in class about strengthening your argument with a variety of evidence and expanding on simple statements to really develop your ideas? Remember my advice to say more about less. I wanted to talk about stereotypes in high school and spend one short paragraph on each type. Will that work? No. We talked about this in class. On several occasions, I specifically said not to stay on the surface and write superficial details about vague ideas. Do you understand the difference between surface and depth? I don't know what to say about Irish Americans. That was my original topic. They are soon to be potato eating, angry drugs. What more can I say? The assignment is much more complicated than that, Brittany. Have you read the assignment sheet? Have you looked at the assignment sheet at all, Brittany? Um, no. So I just say more about each high school stereotype and that will be enough? <laughs> You need to incorporate quotes, evidence from a variety of sources, and have a debatable thesis statement beyond a statement of fact or simple observation. Do you have a debatable thesis statement? Yes. There are many stereotypes in high school. That's not a thesis statement, Brittany. That's a fact. Well, I was also wondering how much of the text will be on the final, because I was really busy this semester and only read every other chapter. I really want an A in this class. I've never gotten anything less than an A in English, so I really want an A. What can I do to bring up my grade? Brittany, you have a C in the class. Your final project is worth 20% of your total grade and the final exam is worth 10% of your total grade, so you would need to ace both of those in order to earn a B in the class. With five days left in the semester, you cannot earn an A. But I want an A. I want a Ford Mustang. Sometimes we can always get what we want. Or so say the Rolling Stones. Had you produced more quality work throughout this semester, you would have a higher grade five days before the end of classes. So, you said three to five pages. I only have two and a half. Is that enough? Does that count? No. Can you count? Three to five pages means three to five pages, not two and a half pages. I really want an A. I need an A in this class to stay in my major program. Surely, you have good grades in other classes. Please tell me your future in your major is in writing on getting an A in a class that you will not be getting an A in. Please tell me you have planned better than that. No. I have C's and B's in all of my other classes. I will do anything for an A. Perhaps you should have thought about that when the semester started, or at the midterm point. Reading the assignment sheets would have helped. Coming to class would have been better. Now your grade is a C and can only go up to a B. But only if you get an A on the final paper and final exam. Is that clear? I have to go. I'm meeting my boyfriend for sushi. Work ethic. Where has it gone? check in a little bit about this. What do you see different, um, it's a difference between millennials of what we'll call the analog adolescence period and the ipubescence period or the iGen folks today. I'd like you to take a moment, tell somebody at your table what you think one difference is between millennials and the C generation. Tell somebody, please. <laughs>
Okay, thank you. Let's have a couple tables share really briefly a sentence statement about one of the differences. What do you have? Give me a statement. Yes, ma'am. We said that we've seen some of those students for at least 20 years. <laughs> yeah. but now, that, I'm hoping none of them are in this room. Yeah. Okay? But that many of the students today are, are accustomed to interacting with one another through a device mm -hmm. as opposed to through conversation. Right. Um, they report being afraid to 